This program is brought to you by Park Davis and Pfizer. I think it's very clear now that epidemiologic evidence demonstrates a very strong linear relationship between the level of LDL cholesterol in the blood and the incidence of both cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. We have obviously made great progress in the battle against cardiovascular disease in this country, but we still have a long way to go. It seems like there's a bottomless pit of patients with hypercholesterolemia out there. I think by now most physicians are familiar with the second National Cholesterol Education Report on treatment of high cholesterol in adults, and specifically familiar with the fact that LDL cholesterol should be the target of such treatment. The panel established different treatment goals for LDL cholesterol depending on the level of risk. An LDL of about 160 for those at relatively low risk, an LDL of about 130 for those with other risk factors but without clinical coronary disease, and an LDL less than 100 for those who already have clinical cardiovascular disease. We need to remember that the NCEP guidelines provide minimal or general LDL target goals, and that lowering the LDL cholesterol beyond these levels is frequently desirable. It's surprising with so much attention being paid to LDL cholesterol that only a limited number of patients are actually reaching their LDL cholesterol goals. According to the NHANES survey, less than half the individuals in this country with two or more risk factors for cardiovascular disease have LDL cholesterol levels below 130. And even more surprising, fewer than 15% of those with known coronary heart disease have levels below 100. So literally millions of Americans remain at risk because of their abnormal lipid levels. One of the problems is that LDL lowering may for many people be very difficult. In some patients, this requires not only dietary therapy, but aggressive drug therapy. That's fat-free, is that all right? Fat-free, would be great. Atorvastatin has the potential to simplify the management of patients with hypercholesterolemia. In the clinical trials, the starting dose named... Atorvastatin is effective as monotherapy in a broad range of patients with hypercholesterolemia. A lipid tour also showed impressive results with two groups of patients who frequently require aggressive lipid management, namely those with coronary artery disease and those with non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. This latter group, of course, uh, often have mixed hyperlipidemia. For every patient who walks into our office, we should have a set of preventive medicine goals to maintain good health. In treating patients with hypercholesterolemia, the major goal is to lower the LDL cholesterol level uh, to a desirable range. Because of the efficacy and tolerability of Lipitor, I feel that the introduction of this drug will help a broad range of hypercholesterolemic patients achieve this goal.
Lipitor is a synthetic HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. Like other statins, it works in the hepatocyte where cholesterol is made to block the enzyme that regulates the committed step in cholesterol synthesis. This leads to a chain of events which eventually lowers the LDL cholesterol level in the circulation. A drop in the cholesterol level within the cell initiates a feedback mechanism that triggers an increased production of LDL receptors. These receptors become integrated into the cell membrane. They lower circulating LDL levels by literally pulling LDL particles out of the bloodstream. By reducing the rate of cholesterol production, a torvastatin reduces the amount of triglyceride-rich, very low-density lipoprotein particles made by the liver. Because these particles mainly consist of triglycerides, a decrease in VLDL production leads to a decrease in triglycerides in the blood. The effect of lowering VLDL is to indirectly lower LDL concentrations as well. This is because some VLDL particles are converted to intermediate density lipoprotein and some of those in turn are converted to LDL particles. So by decreasing VLDL synthesis, we are decreasing LDL levels as well by a second mechanism. The dramatic effects of a torvastatin on lowering the LDL cholesterol and the triglyceride levels is explained mainly by its extended duration of action. When we learn of a new drug uh, with outstanding clinical efficacy, such as a torvastatin, our natural impulse, I believe, is to get to know the whole story about the safety profile. In point of fact, Lipitor is well tolerated. In controlled clinical studies involving over 2,500 patients, fewer than 2% discontinued Lipitor because of adverse effects attributable to the drug. The most frequent adverse effects thought to be related to Lipitor were constipation, flatulence, dyspepsia, and abdominal pain. Persistent transaminase elevations of greater than three times the upper limit of normal on two or more occasions were seen in 0.7% of all patients who receive Lipitor in clinical trials. In comparative trials versus simvastatin, pravastatin, or lovastatin, the incidence of persistent transaminase elevations were similar. For this reason, just like with most statin drugs, liver function tests should be performed before the initiation of treatment at 6 and 12 weeks after the initiation of therapy or elevation in dose, and periodically thereafter. Myopathy should be considered in any patient with diffuse myalgias, muscle tenderness or weakness, and or marked elevation of CPK. Patients should be advised to report promptly unexplained muscle pain, tenderness or weakness, particularly if accompanied by malaise or fever. A torvastatin therapy should be discontinued if markedly elevated CPK levels occur or myopathy is diagnosed or suspected. Lipitor has excellent reductions of LDL cholesterol and triglycerides for a broad range of patients with hypercholesterolemia. Lipitor dramatically lowers LDL cholesterol 39% to 60% across the 10 mg to 80 mg dose range. In a large clinical study, 72% of Lipitor patients reached their NCEP LDL cholesterol goal on the 10 mg starting dose. And Lipitor is well tolerated in clinical trials. Lipitor, a torvastatin calcium, taking cholesterol to new lows. Lipitor is contraindicated in patients with hypersensitivity to any component of this medication, in patients with active liver disease or unexplained persistent elevations of serum transaminases, in women during pregnancy, and in nursing mothers. Myopathy should be considered in any patient with diffuse myalgias, muscle tenderness or weakness, and or marked elevation of CPK. Patients should be advised to report promptly unexplained muscle pain, tenderness, or weakness, particularly if accompanied by malaise or fever. A torvastatin therapy should be discontinued if markedly elevated CPK levels occur or myopathy is diagnosed or suspected. The most frequent adverse effects thought to be related to Lipitor were constipation, flatulence, dyspepsia, and abdominal pain. 
Liver function tests should be performed before the initiation of treatment at 6 and 12 weeks after the initiation of therapy or elevation in dose, and periodically thereafter. Full prescribing information will be provided at the conclusion of this presentation. Thank you.